Hello, everybody, and welcome to the stream. It's me, your boy, and uh, the many other fine folks of the of the Golden Theater to provide you with more Umineko-related content. I was thinking, I was trying to think of like something clever to say, but that obviously didn't work. Oh, thank you, Khan. You are the silver case. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, today's episode of Umineko no Naka Koroni is probably brought to you by, like, Clue or Ace Attorney. Or no, you know what? No, no, it's brought to you by Meow Mix today. You know, meow, 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 meow. It is, in fact, brought to you by Even If Tempest. Yes, actually... Oh, God, no. I know that commercial. I know exactly what you're doing. Stop! It, it is from hell! <laughs> Apologies, I he's I, upset at Meow Mix or if he's upset at uh, Tempest. <laughs> no, no, it's probably I Meow Mix. Homophobic. Could go, it could go either way, I don't know. Alright, let me just go ahead and turn off the browser and turn on the seagulls. Sorry, there's no more no, no more FSR music, I'm afraid. Alright. Oh, what a tragedy. Sorry, that's hey, enough. Hey, listen, those opening themes are bumping. What a shame. Anyways. Time for the banquet of witches and humans. Or well, more of it, anyway. Now we're gonna see what the fuck Burn is up to. I hope I don't have a line within the five, first five seconds. Well, let's see what Burn has to say. Sorry I'm late. I was busy planning some festivities to liven up the party. As Burn Castle spoke, she looked around at everyone. And I thought you two were rotting away in the fragment sea. They're my pieces now. Pretty cool, right? Hmm. <laughs> she stared at Leon and Will with an unnerving smile over on her face, but she seemed to lose interest. Where's Battler? In Beato. I'm a guest, aren't I? Isn't there anyone to welcome me in? I'm here. We did invite you. But I didn't expect you to actually come. Raman, appreciate it. Oh, hell yeah, Raman. I see. This must truly be a miracle. Now that's an interesting way to put it. <laughs> Why'd everyone get so quiet? This is a party, right? Go ahead and be noisy just for the hell of it. Or is you welcoming me with Simon's part of some kind of joke? Now it's your turn. My turn for what? You asked where Battler was, so I told you I was here. Now it's your turn. What are you talking about? Did something happen? Angie's gone. Even I, the Game Master, don't know where she went. That's insane! Isn't this your game? That doesn't make sense! Angie's disappearing is in a scenario created by Battler. That means there must be another Game Master. Is that even possible? Oh, yes. I was surprised myself. Just when I opened the game board to start a delightful game of my own, I found that Battler had started up this bizarre game at the same time. 
I never thought I'd be in a gang with two game masters. In other words, you're admitting that you hid Angie away somewhere. Mm. It would seem so. Whoa. That was my nephew. After all, no one could introduce a scenario you didn't build, except another game master. So, is this one of those festivities to liven up the party you mentioned? You all look like you were having a blast with that quiz tournament. So, I decided I wanted to join in. And you chose to hold Andy ho Angie hostage for that purpose. You've got it. Battler, be a toe. I want to challenge you to a game. You cannot refuse. Not if your treasure Angie is a little sister, that is. <laughs> what do you want? Lambda and I made a bet about the game between you and Beato. I must acknowledge that I've lost. At least, that I've lost to Lambda. <laughs> Burn tries to act all dry, but she's way more persistent than she looks. So you're saying you lost to me, but not to Battler and Beato? It seemed as though Burn Castle might smile. However, she didn't. Those cold eyes spoke without words. Battler understood. He had played so many games against Beato. Those games had been a wordless message from Beato. So he knew. He understood. She wants to fight us. Is that it? She will be a fearsome opponent. But we can't back out. I know that. We mustn't let Angie become Lady Burncastle's plaything. Beato understood as well. She understood why Burncastle was asking for one final battle. I never thought I'd see Burn fighting openly like this. Do you find that funny? Why would I? Thanks. Lambda Delta understood as well. Before the tale of Battler and Beato ended, before everything else was locked away in the cat box, Burn Castle would finally move from the audience to the stage. That witch who had hidden off to the side of the stage, no longer to come out into the light, would now show that she had the courage to step forward onto the stage itself. As a friend, Lambda Delta showed that she understood Burn Castle's human emotions, which had given her this courage. Is there anything I can do? Please act as an observer for my game. <laughs> sure. <clears throat> if you promise that you'll release Angie if we take part in your game, that is. Of course. Without such a promise, we aren't obligated to go alone with this farce in any way. You may not owe me anything. But you'll never see Angie again. In that case, you can enjoy being branded as a loser for the next few centuries. Beato, don't provoke her. This isn't a fight we can back down from. <laughs> Indeed. Now that a hostage had been taken, their ability to negotiate had disappeared. However, Lambda Delta was agreeing to become an observer if that would make Burncastle promise to release Angie. Unless she had Burncastle to promise like that, the latter would have been would have, would have had would have nothing to lose. To make this final fight, Burncastle wanted a proper one. Lambda Delta made her agree to this. Oh, Kelly, oh, please mute. Yeah. 
I promise. When the game ends, I'll release Angie. Don't make a fool of me, okay? When I get shamed, I never let go of the one who did it until they regret it. Lambda Delta spoke in a soft, yet threatening tone. However, Burncastle laughed lightly, as though <laughs> the look on Lambda Delta's face was merely cute. I swear it. I swear it on our friendship. Ew. Lambda Delta whistled and grinned. Apparently this is the oh, most reliable not. oath. No, that's fine. Burncastle could utter. Oh, it hurts my Okay. Lambda Delta nodded, looked between Battler and Burncastle, and spoke. By the name of Lambda Delta, which of certainty, I accept the role of observer for your fight. Battler, Beato, you have no objections, right? Battler and Bia, though, nodded at each other, then nodded at Lambda to show their determination. I'm so glad. We finally get to fight each other. I had a feeling I'd end up fighting you sooner or later. Since when? I'm not sure. Might have been before I even learned your name. Battler vaguely remembered her speaking to him, somewhere in an unconscious world he couldn't recall. At the time, it, it even sounded like she was giving him advice for his fight with Beato. But thinking back on it, there was a bit more to it than that. She might have been a cat fighting from the sidelines, too scared to go out into the bright sunlight. So I had a vague premonition that, eventually, they would stand opposed to each other in the, on the game board in some way. She was also one of the players. Now, at the very end, as the game board is beginning is being put away, she finally found the courage to step up onto the stage. I'd like to accept your brave challenge. In the name of that courageous girl who was once your peace. I forced Erica to fight a duel. I wanted to win. And even more strongly, I didn't want to lose the fear of possibly tasting defeat tormented me. And, thinking back on it, I envied you two back then. Erica was a great piece of yours, and my rival. I won't forgive you for abandoning her in the end and burying her in the depths of oblivion. Just what do you want me to do? Apologize to Erica? Save Erica from the depths of oblivion, and invite her to this party. Save... Erica? Apologies, there would be minor, minor delays throughout the course of this. Uh, because of the events happening in the background of Kaneko's mic. It's unavoidable. Minor baby crying, yes, very true. She needs to go smite the baby, give her a second. No, we do not need to be fond of the baby. <laughs> Stab the baby. Please fond the baby. Hey, I said he spawn the pupper before. Yeah, Connor, if you're concerned this might take us if you're concerned this this might take a small bit, we could have uh B step in every so often if you need to. Okay, it's all good. Never mind, we're good to go. Yeah, sorry, my mom is cleaning out my niece's belly button because she's still bitty babby. Does she need to do that in your room? No, it's just the walls are surprisingly thin in this house. Yeah. As it would seem. They're here until Wednesday. Let's keep it moving. All right. I feel the same as Battler. 
She was a piece who stood in opposition to us, but she was only faithfully fulfilling her role. There can be no game without a rival. She remains our enemy, but she's also an important friend to us. Even though she made you suffer so much. We fought a fair fight. The outcome may have changed our fates. Now that we've dueled each other, we'll always be friends. Hmm. Her internet despawned. Oh no. Oh, we're getting an aw. Oh. My issue. issue. Ooh. Maybe unplug and replug it really quickly? Oh, hey, nice there we go. <laughs> Hot uh, damn. You wanted to be their friend too, don't you, Burn? That's why you want it. That's why you want a fair fight with them now, isn't it? Are you laughing at me? We aren't. On the contrary, we welcome it. Thanks. <gasps> Even though I've taken a hostage. If you didn't, you probably wouldn't have been able to come up with the come up onto the stage. There had been no need to take a hostage. Valor and Beato had been more than willing to accept this final duel, if Burncastle wished it. It wasn't hard to make out anything from Burncastle's silent expression. Fine. What's fine? I'll release Erica from the depths. I'm glad you decided to do this. For someone as proud as Burncastle for giving the peace who had caused her defeat, it would have been nearly unbearable. Rattler knew this, so he realized how much this bit of compassion had cost Burncastle. Burncastle snapped her fingers and a black cat slipped out of, out, out of her shadow. I tossed her all the way into the deepest parts of Oblivion. It might take her a while to get here. It matters not. There's no danger of the food and drink running out. Go, kitty. Guide that kid here. When she gave this order, the cat melted into the darkness. Its bell jingling. I can hardly believe that you'd forgive Erica. I don't plan on forgiving her. So, she's not my peace anymore. Anyone feel like picking her up? After all, you already picked up Leon and Will. Burncastle. You have my thanks. Okay, enough with the sentimentality. I've already had as much as I can bear. Sure. We all we have this game. As far as I care, we could have it here with all the noise. Or in the usual quiet spot. Lady Burncastell has already shown that she has the courage to stand before a great many people. There is no point in making her suffer any longer. Good point. Let's go to the usual place. Any objections, Baron? None. Sorry, partygoers. We'll be headed out for a bit, but please continue to enjoy yourselves. Zephar, fur fur. Liven up this place. When Erica gets here, let's have everyone give her a warm welcome. <laughs> Fuck. Randy <laughs> Bay, Randy Bay, just go. Just go okay. for it. Just do it. Alright. Yes, Lady Yes, Lamp Lady Lamb Lamp Delta. <laughs> I tried. You did your best. Your wish is our command. No. 
Well then, let us take her to the usual room, a fitting place for our battle of wits. Battler snapped his fingers. Space shattered. I do that I snapped in that. There we go. Nice. As long as it's not a whistle. Mm. Hmm. They were now in the smoking room of the witches. The place where witches had once debated, schemed, and reasoned all they could. Burncastle had been invited there once again, and the final game would now begin. Do you have a game prepared? Of course. I worked hard on this game, and I'm pretty proud of it. So, Burn will be the game master, and Battler and Beatle will be the players. It'll be a normal game where Burn creates a motor tail and the two players have to reconstruct it with human tricks. I'm interested to see what sort of scenario Lady Burn Castell develops. We'll explain things with the blue truth, and you'll knock those down with the red truth. Are we okay with those rules? My game will be a simpler one. It's just a quiz of guessing the culprit. I don't feel like trading red and blue with you. Oh? What kind of game will that be? Would you mind letting me have a look at it first? Ferncastle held her palm upwards and a palely glowing fragment appeared there. Lambda Delta brushed it with her hand and, her sh and shut her eyes. See? It's a simple game, isn't it? You're right. It's much more straightforward than the mind games these two played in the past. This isn't even a game about witches and humans anymore. That's right. This is a game about humans. Oh, what a surprise. The game Burn created to combat Beatso's fantasy is a genuine mystery. Please explain. It's extremely simple. You'll watch the tale Burn has prepared for you. There are several rules to it, but if you follow them as you read it through, it'll lead you to a single truth. In other words, an answer. So, it's an ordinary mystery novel? I see. In that case, there's no need for combat between red and blue truth. In Beato's games, the arguments have been about whether the story was a mystery or not. However, Burncastle's game was a mystery. There's no need to argue over that from the start. I've even cut out the motive and the tricks. There's only one question I'm asking you. Who done it? What a simple yet fitting way to conclude our fight. Yeah. No cheap tricks. Just a stoically simple game. This is a genuine duel. As the observer, I'll say this. This game is made to be solvable. In other words, I guarantee that it's a suitable setting for your duel. Burn, I know I keep on saying this. But are you really sure? Batman and Beata's relationship started because they both love mystery. I agree it's a pretty tricky scenario, but I'm not sure it'll be enough to stop these two. If my best tale can't stop them, then what comes, will come. The important thing is that Lady Burncastell put everything she had into this game. You're right. Will that be enough to stump us? That's all the simple game is about. Thanks, Lambda. Thanks to you, we know that this duel will be a fair fight. Uh -oh. 
my problems yeah. again, dude? Oh no. Uh, hello. Yes, good. There We're good. Go. All right. <clears throat> You're welcome. I'm happy too. Yeah, it'll be an honor to witness Burn fighting this precious fight. I am also honored to have you as an opponent. Same here. I underestimated you. And I did without even stepping onto the battlefield with you. Just thinking about it makes me want to vomit. So let me fight. Indeed. Show us what you've got. If I win, I'll be able to look down on you for real this time. And if I lose... I'll surely be reminded of the emotion I know I've forgotten. Indeed. Burn Castle. Whether you end up winning or losing, I promise you one thing. What's that? When this duel's over, we'll be friends. <laughs> Enough of that, please. The sentimentality is killing me. Lambda clapped her hands. A pleasant sound rang out. Will you be the reader, Baron? Or shall I do that? I don't need a reader. Huh? A reader Miko can use her own voice to embellish or distort the tale. Even if there was no cheap trickery in my game, by having a reader, any amount of trickery could be added. Yes, that is true. That's another of the Game Master's privileges. I want to have a straightforward duel with you. So, I don't need a reader. You can read this tale with your own eyes and ears. Are you sure? That means you lost almost all your advantages. Understood. You don't need a reader. We'll read the tale ourselves. If there is no reader, does that mean there will absolutely be no falsehoods contained in the narrative text? We're ready, Burncastle. Hmm. A showdown over a genu genuine mystery. Within any cheap tricks. If you're gonna play fair and square, we'll challenge you head on, too. Thank you. And I don't plan on losing either. No, no, no. That's no good, Lady Burn. Hmm? She's right. If you're a witch challenging us with a mystery, you can't have an attitude like that. Yeah, it's all useless. Burncastle, realizing what Battler and Beata were asking for, snorted. Thumbelta nodded at her, telling her to enjoy this final duel to the fullest. <laughs> what were you expecting? A happy mystery chat between humans and witches? Come on, don't make me laugh. Let's see if your cheery mysteries are any match for the one I've prepared. Let's see what you've got. We wouldn't have it any other way. Yes, we'll accept your challenge, Lady Burngastel, Witch of Miracles. Alright, time to start! I, Game Master Shurumiya Battler, and Beatrice, the Endless Witch, will be your opponents. 
Don't start crying when we wipe the, wipe the floor with you. Take this. Here's my mystery. Burn Castle took a fragment containing the game and smashed it against the table, shattering with a brilliant light as the game scenario laid itself out. The curtain rose on the mystery Burn Castle had created. All right, so hey, before we even say any, before we even start, and don't worry, I'm not about to spoil anything. If you haven't been paying it all up to this point, pay attention now. It's gonna help you out a lot in a little bit. It's not that difficult. Just make sure you see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Oh boy! Okay, no sound. Us, no sound, but that of the falling rain filled the room. It covered the tragic scene in the bloody dining hall. At some point, Angie had fainted and fallen onto the floor. Now her conscience was slowly returning, forcing her to remember what had happened in this room. So she reflexively averted her gaze, even before the memory overtook her. Six bodies lay in the blood-stained dining hall. Strangely enough, as her conscience returned bit by bit, the terrifying scene before her seemed somehow less intense. This time, Angie was able to look at the six corpses well enough to make out who they were. First, there was her real appearance. Her pitiful sight, covered bright red by a bloody makeup. And lying next to them, Uncle Hideyoshi and their Eva. Uncle Hideyoshi, the man who always says funny things and he makes me laugh. Then the neighbor, the aunt who seems to be so fond of me. And she saw the service lying over there. And the one lying right there is Aunt Rosa. Six people. The full six people had their lives taken from them and are lying in this room. Maybe I cried myself out before I fell unconscious. The scene before me was still terribly painful, but I was somehow able to look at it without losing my head. I already felt all the sadness I could at my parents' deaths. The next emotion that rose up inside me was a desire to check and see that everyone else was okay. In that instant, I heard a scraping sound. Just as I was about to relax again, thinking I must have imagined it, I heard the same sound again. It was probably coming from the door. Someone was climbing at the door from the outside. Of course, I had no way of knowing who it was. However, for some reason, I was sure that it was that black cat scratching at the door. The black cat was telling me to leave this room. I understood. I put my hand on the doorknob. I immediately noticed something odd. The door was locked. The same bad feeling I'd felt after being locked in the parlor crawled up my spine. However, unlike the time in the parlor, this door unlocked itself easily when I turned the knob. I unlocked it and slowly open the door. Beyond the door, I could see the dimly lit hallway and a cat dashing down it away from me. Then it stopped, its emerald eyes glittering in the darkness, as though it was waiting for me to follow. The hallway was dark, and wrapped in an eerie silence. 
when the black cat saw that he was coming, he walked forward as if guiding me. I could hear nothing except the creaking of the floor, the bell of the cat, and the sound of the storm outside. The party's being held in the hall. I should be able to hear at least a little of the noise from this hallway. Maybe it got really late when I was unconscious in the dining hall. That was a reasonable conclusion. Then we finally reached the main hall. The hall was frigid, and no trace of that party remained. Could all of that fun have been just an illusion? The black cat's bell rang out. When I looked up, I saw it had its feet on the stairway to the second floor, urging me to follow it. Are you going to the second floor? The black cat seemed to nod, then silently went up the stairs. Guests were allowed to go wherever they wanted on the first floor. But the second floor was Klaus's family's house, and I remember getting in trouble for trying to go up there. However, for the moment, I couldn't think of any options other than following that cat. walked along the dark hallway with the black cat. Eventually, we reached one of the doors. The black cat scratched at the door, then turned to look at me. He must have been telling me to open it. Okay. Uh, I'll open it for you. I put my hand up the doorknob, and felt the resistance of a lock again. This door is locked. I turned around to tell the cat this, but inexplicably, a single key lay right in front of the cat. Angie picked, up, picked it up and stuffed it into the keyhole. As she did, she finally noticed something strange with her fingertips. Blood. Somehow Angie's fingertips had been stained red with blood. She let a short cry and the key slipped out and fell into the ground. She finally realized, in the darkness she hadn't noticed before, the black cat's key was covered with blood. The emotion that had gone numb in Angie sprang back. A terrifying scream rang out through the dark hallway. Even so, Angie would eventually open that door. That door led to Natsuhi's room. Natsuhi's room was in a terrible mess. Blankets and sheets were torn. Co cosmetics and books lay all over the place, as though a typhoon had just ripped through it. And there were corpses. Kraus and Natsuhi's corpse lay sprawled onto the floor. Very shortly, Angie will step into this room. She will then scream in terror once more. It isn't limited to the dining hall and not to his room. In the stormy rose garden, Shannon's tragic corpse lays exposed. Lies. Par partway down the path to the rose garden is Jessica's corpse. When Angie finds that, she'll probably dash, crying, and screaming into the guest house. And death awaits her inside the guest house as well. Just inside the front door is Nanjo's corpse. In the servant root room nearby, even Goda and Kumasawa lay dead. 
The total number of corpses is 13. A full 13 corpses are waiting for Angie. They wait in the mansion and the guest house on this desolate Rokenjima for Angie, exposed to the wind and rain and tormented by thunder to find them. Okay, now start paying attention. Oh wait, that wasn't one red thing. Yeah, no, that was that's my mistake. <laughs> oh, oh I goodness. Was, I was, I was gonna say he First Twilight! He, it's a little preemptive, but I mean it's good to know. I missed that part, my mistake. That's The tragedy of the first The tragedy of the first Twilight was discovered at six o'clock in the morning on the following day. Goda, who had woken up to get breakfast ready, wanted to check on the adult siblings who had remained in the dining hall since the previous night because of the family conference. Tell us about when you discovered the crime. The dining hall was locked up. Of course, there was a lock on the doors to the dining hall, but they usually remained unlocked. I knocked, but there was no answer. Don't worry about that. Jelly! Jelly. You are muted, Shelly. Shelly! Oh no. Uh, Noir, prepare to intercept in a few seconds. Alright, go. <gasps> That's when I arrived. I recommended that he try unlocking the door just in case. When I unlocked the door with a master key, a terrifying sight awaited me inside! Alright, now Charlie can go. Emma-sama, Hideyoshi-sama, Rudolph-sama, Kerry-sama, Rosa-sama, and Genji-sama. Genji-san. Six people in all were lying there, covered in blood. A great tumult followed. Everyone gathered in the dining hall. I don't want to remember it. The sight of all the sobbing children crept over the corpses of their own parents. There was a chance they might have still been alive. Everyone was shaking them desperately. Yes. The death of each parent was confirmed by their own child. Dr. Nanjo and I confirmed that Genji Sama was dead. Sucho! Sucho is some way to be killed. Doctor or not, what no one examining a body will reach the wrong conclusion. Looks like all of the victims died instantly. <laughs> After inspecting the interior of the dining room, we determined that all of the doors and windows had been locked, making it a locked room. And nothing suspicious was found in the dining hall. Cut. Of course, there was no one hiding in the dining hall either. Naturally. All of us are here right now. It's clear that no one is hiding. But, Dad, if that's true, that doesn't make sense. Six people were killed in the dining hall of the closed room. How could someone have killed them and escaped? I did not think of it. But perhaps the servants with the master are the most suspicious. They killed the six, then left and locked the door with their master keys. It is a logical theory. <laughs> That's absurd! Since there was no chance of the culprit hiding inside the dining hall, it made sense to assume that the culprit locked the door after committing the murder and exiting the room. It's really natural that the servants, with their master keys, would fall under suspicion. 
Sadly enough, none of the servants had an alibi. And again, it wasn't only the servants. Everyone else liked an alibi as well. Is there a way to lock up from the lock up from the outside without a master key? No, there isn't. Hmm. That's not enough. I'll say it with the red truth. All doors can only be locked or unlocked with a master key. Of course, it is possible to lock or unlock the doors from inside the room even without a master key. And there you have it. Any other questions? Shouldn't there be keys to each individual room in addition to the master keys? Normally, those would exist. However, they make the game more complicated, so I've eliminated them. Red Truth. In this game, we'll consider master keys to be the only keys that exist. In other words, all the locks that appear in this game can only be locked or unlocked by master keys. And that's what it means. It really is a simple game. In that case, we should now check the number of master keys and who holds them. There are five master keys total. One is held by each of the five servants. The keys will be managed in a special way. The servant keeps the master servants keep the master keys on their person at all times, so it's impossible for them to be stolen, handed over, or used by any other human other than themselves. Whoops. What the heck? That is something less like keys and more like a fingerprinting system. That's an interesting metaphor. In other words, in the world of this game, it isn't the master keys, but the five servants themselves that can lock or unlock doors. We tried to retrieve Genji-san's master key, but had no luck. To prevent trouble later on, we destroyed Genji's master key. This is the crime of the first twine. The scene was, was the locked, closed room of the dining hall. And the servants holding the master keys have alibis. And again, no one else has an alibi either. Second Twilight. Everyone returned to the parlor to discuss what should be done next. The phones were out so they couldn't contact the police. Was the mysterious culprit hiding away somewhere, planning to attack their next victim at this very moment? Or was the culprit in here with them, mentally sticking out their tongue and, taste and tasting their prey next? Their next prey. None of them had alibis, and any one of them could have been a culprit. However, the tense feeling didn't last long. By midday, everyone got tired of arguing and they decided to take a break. Kraus and Natsuki announced they, walked, they wanted to talk with each other alone and went up to the second floor. This was the, that was the beginning, and after that, everyone went their separate ways now and then, such as the head to the bathroom or gaze at the endless rain. However, no matter how much time passed, Kraus and Natsuki were the only ones who didn't return. Calls were then sent to both Kraus and, Natsuki, to, to both Kraus and Natsuki's rooms in the extension phone line, but there was no answer. Something must have happened. Might have happened. Everyone headed to Kraus and Natsuhi's rooms together. And in Natsuhi's room, they found Kraus and Natsuhi lying sprawled out on the floor. Madame's room is locked! It's like a dining hall! After getting everyone's permission, I unlocked the door. 
Kurasama and Natsuki-sama laid sprawled on the floor inside the room. But the Nanjo checked their pulse. They announced the two of them were, had died instantly. Correct! I, com I confirmed both of their deaths. There could be no doubt they died. I searched all over the room looking for a clue. In the end, I found that the windows and doors were all locked, making it a locked room. Jelly. Not that closed room. Just want to keep the window open. Be a seven. It's all have master. So we'll be suspected again. But have no fear! Have the madame begin to suspect us instead of keeping an eye on each other? All of us servants are together the whole time. All of the servants can pr prove an alibi for all of the other servants. Now that's interesting. Suggesting that this closed room is even more complete. In the case of the first closed room, no one had an alibi. So for this closed room, all of them have alibis. In this world, the servants themselves become living master keys. Since those servants have perfect alibis, it was impossible to lock knots of his room. We decided to preserve the crime scene as it was. We put duct tape all over the outside of the doors and windows sealing them. I'm sure the culprit left some sort of clue in this room. We made sure that no one would be able to enter or leave until the police arrived. And we did the same thing in the dining hall. You also see the dining hall in the same way. We reached the conclusion that the entire mansion itself should be preserved. We also sealed the mansion itself, and all of us took refuge in the guest house. We sealed the whole mansion? Packing tape on all the windows? They means the ladder for the windows on the third floor. The game would get complicated otherwise, so I've simplified it. All of the windows have steel bars on them, so it's impossible to enter or leave by them. Therefore, we'll say that they can seal the whole mansion by sealing the two doors, the front one and the back one. Got it. That makes it easy. What do you think? Actually, killing the two people in our Nazi's room would be easy. We would just have to knock it and get them to open the door. However, they couldn't lock it afterwards. Only the servants can lock doors. But all of the servants have alibis. Unless the servants are all in this together. More importantly, the first twilight has me suspicious. Do you think that one of the six who died in the dining hall was actually alive and committed the crime? It's all because of Erica. I cannot but be suspicious when people are examining corpses. So you think that one of the first six victims was alive? Yeah. And afterwards they killed Krauss and Natsuhi. And they locked the door from the inside, hid inside the room, and had a good chance to escape. Mm, that theory does make logical sense. I'll say it in bed. The culprit of the first Twilight has definitely killed six people. Then I'll take a shot with the blue troop. Here is the true nature of this closed room. The culprit locked the door from the inside, then hid in Natsuhi's room. 
Then after everyone left, they found an opportunity to escape. Sure. I'll deny that in red. The group sealed the room at the same time they left. No culprit joined the group as they left. Also, all of the seals on Natsuhi's room, the dining hall, and the mansion itself will never be broken. <laughs> In other words, you can't use that trick when they hide under the bed and slip out later. Interesting. Nice going, Burncastle. Thanks. This is the crime of the second twilight. The scene was Natsuhi's room, a locked closed room. This time all the servants with master keys have alibis. The whole group, realizing the dangers of being inside the mansion, took shelter in the guest house. Fourth Twilight. All those who took refuge in the guest house decided to hole up in there until the typhoon passed. There everyone watched everyone else. They shouldn't be they should be able to prevent further crime both from inside and outside. However, they wouldn't be able to keep it up without any breaks until the typhoon passed. Once again, their actions left a weak point open, as if they had, were faced with yet another tragedy. Shannon Chan and Cannon Coon went outside on an errand and still haven't come back! George and his son got upset, so we all went outside to look for them. We found Shannon Chan lying in the Rose Garden. Oh, poor, poor Shannon Chan. I... I prayed she was still alive. However, I was forced to acknowledge that she was dead. Of course, I also examined and confirmed her death. When the two of them left, we were busy checking the locks around the guest house. So not one of us has an alibi. Me? Me kill her? How? How could I have killed her? That's right. George O'Neill couldn't kill her. Ugh. Later on, we learned that George Nissan alone had an alibi. At least regarding Shannon's death, it was impossible for George Nissan to be the murderer. Turn it around. Anyone could have killed her beside George Anarchy. Prevent the club from abusing it for any mischief. We destroyed the master key Shannon's son held, had held on the spot. At the time Shannon is killed, Cannon goes missing forever. From now on, Cannon is treated as having been killed. Also, Cannon's master key is treated as having been destroyed. Well, I thought it'd be rude, so I kept quiet about it. But that's what happens when Shannon dies. In other words, we can interpret this as Shannon and Cannon being killed at the same time, even though we're missing a corpse. That's right. Hmm. As the crimes are moving along. This was the crime of the fourth twilight. The scene was the Rose Garden. There were no locks or doors. It wasn't a closed room. So the master keys were no longer effective. And the, pa the pace of the crime began to accelerate. Fifth and Sixth Twilights. Everyone took shelter in the guest house. They carefully sealed all doors and windows, locking themselves in a closed room. However, several closed room murders had already occurred. Could locking themselves in a closed room do anything more than invite another tragedy? After arguing fiercely in the cousin room about finding the culprits, they decided that they should double check Nanjo, Kumasawa, and Goto's testimony. And there, they learned the tra that a tragedy had occurred once more. Good 
Crucial by these wounds, Uda Son and Kamasawa Son died instantly, I believe. Such a gruesome way to die. Like hell, they could survive wounds like this. Godasan and Kumasawasan are both dead! Well, he had them busy keeping a lookout and locking up and all that. Once again, none of us have an alibi. That's not true. Look. If they were killed in that way, the culprit would have definitely gotten a large amount of blood splatter on themselves. But Dr. Nanjo and all the cousins have no blood splatter on them. All of us. In other words, the four cousins and Dr. Nanjo couldn't have killed Godasan and Kumasawasan. In that case, clearly the culprit is someone other than us. I guess that someone might have snuck in. So I checked around, but the guest house is still completely locked up. Perhaps the culprit has the master key after all. That's impossible. No master keys exist anymore except the two keys on the two people who lay dead here. Since the two master keys that exist are here inside the guest house, that makes this guest house a perfect closed room. Well, since someone's dead, it obviously wasn't perfect. <laughs> This is the crime of the fifth and sixth twilights. Same as the closed room known as, known as the guest house. Godo and Kumasawa's master keys were also destroyed, and all the master keys have now been lost. Now, no one can break into the closed room guest house. At least that should have been the case. Seventh Twilight. This time, Dr. Nanjo was killed. He died in the entrance hall of the guest house. It was far too foolish for him to come here alone to check that everything was locked. He, he's dead. He's been killed. Even, even I can say for sure that this was an instant death. Everything's locked up perfectly. If this is a closed room, that means the culprit is one of us. Impossible. Judging by the circumstances, Maria, Battler, George Nissan, and I couldn't have killed Dr. Anjo. In the first place, no one could kill Dr. Anjo inside the guest house. And look at this. Simply put. This is proof that Dr. Nanjo didn't leave the guest house. That means no one could kill Dr. Nanjo, right? So how was he killed? No one can answer that innocent question. This is the seventh twilight. Once again, the crime scene was the closed room known as the guest house. Various sorts of evidence made this crime seem even more impossible. And the tragedy reached the eighth twilight, the final one. Eighth twilight. Here we are. By now, it was clear that holding up wasn't what wouldn't keep them safe. Jessica might have chosen anger as a way to numb her fear. He flew out of the guest house in a rage, looking for the culprit that surely hid somewhere outside. George, Battler, and Maria hurriedly chased after her. Then, outside the building, they found Jessica lying on the ground. It was, as anyone could tell at a glance, a gruesome corpse. Poor oh, Jessica Chan. She probably died instantly. There's no way she can live through this. <laughs> the three of us were together the whole time! George Anaki, Maria, and I couldn't have killed Jessica! Yeah. The three of us couldn't have killed Jessica. 
as if Maria Chan could kill someone. Maria Chan couldn't kill anyone. <laughs> Thanks. Jojo Ni Chan couldn't kill an adult. He could kill a kid, though. <laughs> uh, I don't understand it at all! What the hell is going on here? This is the eighth twilight. The crime scene was outside. Of the three who chased after Jessica have alibi. George, Battler, and Maria couldn't have killed Jessica. So is there really someone hiding on this island apart from the Ashuramia family? The curtain is lowered on this tape. For now. Uh, oh, I don't like the ASMR feeling you gave me just there. Hmm. That's all for my tale. It's pretty well made. If you had a full-on reader, it'd stand up well against Fiato's games. I agree there. You did a good job. Well, the real work comes from taking this, reading it, and making it worthy of proper theater going. Still, I'm stumped. The face of it, the culprit has to be some some mysterious person inside the Ashurmia family. And that would be the same as acknowledging the existence of a witch. We can also suspect the existence of some accomplices aiding the culprit. By the way, what was that purple text all about? A new rule? I call them purple statements. It's a rule I made to make the story a bit easier to follow. Just think of the purple statements as important spoken statements. In other words, you might be able to ignore the spoken statements that aren't purple. Uh huh. Well, that's nice of you. Then are the purple statements as reliable as red truth? Yes. You can think of the purple statements as having the same power as red truth. However, there's one exception. A culprit can tell lies with purple statements. I see. Turn it around, anyone who isn't a culprit can't tell lies. Purple statements. These seem to be a key to Lady Burncastell's game. Yeah, that's right. I'll explain the rules for my game. The definition of culprit is one who murders. It is possible for a culprit to lie. It is possible for a culprit to lie even before committing murder. Characters who are not culprits only speak the tr truth. Characters who are not culprits cannot cooperate with a culprit. A culprit must carry out all murders directly, by their own hands. A culprit must not die. A culprit must be among the characters appearing in the story. Purple statements are as absolute as red truths. However, a culprit can lie with purple statements. That's all. Definition of culprit is one who murders. Makes sense. It is possible for a culprit to lie. That seems reasonable enough, too. It is possible for a culprit to lie even before committing murder. Well, no surprises there. Characters who are not culprits only speak the truth. How convenient. Characters who are not culprits may not cooperate with the culprit, right? So the, culprit can't, so the culprit can't make accomplices tell lies to match their versions of events. Damn. My guess is that someone manufactured an alibi to cover for the culprit, but... Oh, too bad. 
A culprit must carry out all murders directly by their own hands. In other words, there are no remote or indirect methods of murder like traps. Culprit must not die. Those that can't commit murder, form a closed room, and commit suicide. Doesn't that mean that the dead people can't be the can't be culprits? Hmm. That's a simple yet vital piece of information. The cover must be among the characters appearing in the story. But isn't this about some mysterious stranger who so this isn't about some mysterious stranger who snuck up onto the island? The appearing characters are the same old 17 after Kinzo is removed. No one else appears in the story, so no one else matters. Purple's statements are as absolute as red truths. However, the culprit alone may lie with Purple's statements. Now here's a troublesome one. Might be the heart of this game. Does that cover all the game's basic rules? Besides that, I guess there's only the reader will tell no lies. In other words, there are no lies in the non-dialogue narrative text. I could have added that stuff if I wanted, but it'd be a pain to make things complicated. So you really may abandon the witch's privileges. You seem quite confident. She probably plans to win despite that. That's all for me. I don't intend to give you any more hints or answer any more questions. The Observer, I'll proclaim this once again. I guarantee that it's possible to identify the culprit with this information. Okay. Got it. I can't wait to get started. I can't believe the two of us are going to take on the same mystery together once more. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. This is a real game between you and me. Oh, actually, this is probably, is, uh, burn. Yeah. This is probably yeah. burn. Go ahead. This is a real game between you and me. I recommend finding some paper and something to write with. That is, if you really intend to fight me. If you do get completely stuck, maybe you should listen in on Battler and Beato's reasoning. But won't we have those be hints for when you get absolutely stumped and can't move forward? Still, I'd rather fight you one-on-one. -on -one. Or I guess one-on-ten -on in this instance. If you plan to enjoy our little duel, then try defeating me by your own power alone, without relying on any hints. Okay, let's enjoy ourselves. Shall we? Enjoy this game that I've created, just for you. You have ten minutes! What?! Alright, uh, do you guys have, you, you have all of the information available like, for us to look yeah, at? Yeah, can I get a list of those? All you can, them. actually. Mm -hmm. Check right. the purple. Check the purple by person or by chapter? Ten minutes? Ten minutes! Well, ten we minutes. gotta see I, the thing before you set the timer. First off, you just read the story. Uh, hold on, let me actually get my timer and mm -hmm. Orange can get his thing. How, so how about we make sure we have our bearings before the timer starts? Uh, timer will stop during hints. Uh, uh, yeah, like, like our game. Okay. Alright, okay. who do you want- alright, where do you want to start? I want to see what Cannon said. Alright, let's go by person then. 
All right, starting the timer. Oh, shit. No. Okay, Cannon confirmed it for the first Twilight, along with Dr. Nanjo. Then... So, these are confirmed deaths. Well, so let me reiterate the purpose of what the Purple Truth is. The Purple Truth is... It, it is the same as the Red, unless it is the Culprit, in which case the Culprit can lie using the Purple Truth. In which case it becomes an overly complicated logic puzzle. Mm -hmm. Because it means someone has to be lying. Oh no, it's very simple. There's someone who's lying. Find who's lying. Alright, and so we didn't see... Okay, so it, it could also, I guess, be the non... Like, it could also be the characters that are not the three left at the end of that story. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, so was that all the characters that were proclaimed alive at the end of that story? The last, the characters that are proclaimed as being alive at the end of this story are Battler, George, and Maria. This is a really complicated thing to do without actually having control of the novel. Yep. Yeah. This is not intended for this format. Which is why I really uh, not going to go by as fast minute. as possible. Yes. It looks like this first part's only highlighting just the first Twilight, though, because there's only six people that are red. And the seven. Well, I'm pretty sure those are just the people who don't have purple truths because they died before they could talk. Mm -hmm. I guess that makes uh, sense. Oh, no, let that. Yeah, no. Yep. Okay, then. Alright, so. Uh, uh, uh. Bone poison. Bone, bone hurting juice here. You can uh, request hints at any time. You can request hints? Hand. Okay. Okay, um, I have a question. Okay, let him uh, let him ask his question before hints, mm -hmm. I guess. God, I hate your smug face looking at me. Wait, let him talk. Uh, my question is, um, how long, uh, for how many Twilights were uh, Rudolph and Kyrie still in the, uh, in the contest? They died in the first one. They were, the first they were dead from the beginning. Alright, let's get out hand. Hint. I hope you stop that timer. These purple statements are quite a problem. But none of their statements are important enough to be on par with red truths. But they also contain the culprit's lies. Even the dumbest idiot wouldn't try swallowing a whole hole if there might be a needle inside. Ha. Uh. Indeed. If we accept the purple blindly, there's no chance the truth will come to light. Roll the needle in it. I like that analogy. This precious, vital information might as well be wasted thanks to, the, thanks to one tiny lie. Just which lines in this vast collection of purple have lies in them? Just thinking about it makes my head hurt. Then why don't we try spinning the chessboard around? Oh. What do you mean? It's simple. Forget which ones are lies. Let's concentrate on finding out which ones must be true. Are there any purple statements that we know must be true? That's what we're looking for. Look for people who couldn't who couldn't possibly be the culprit. If we can do that, then all the purple statements are there are the same as the red truth. I see. Instead of searching for the culprit, we'll start by searching for those who couldn't be the culprit. Yes, a simple and fundamental strategy. That's it. There's gotta be someone, so let's look through there carefully. In other words, you gotta start from square one, huh? Let's see what they can do. Alright, show me the Maria purple. Sure. Timer continues. Why are you focusing on Maria? Because, well, at the very end, they were like, this person can't do this, and this person can't do this. All victims died instantly. We put duct tape all over the outside of the doors and windows, sealing them. Everything is locked up perfectly. There's no way she could live through this. The three of us couldn't have killed Jessica. Jojo Ni Chan couldn't kill an adult. He could kill a he kid, could though. Kill a kid, though. All right. So if she's <laughs> okay, so what can be a lie here? If she's the killer, 
uh, then I would like to think of the main things that would have be that would actually be a lie in this scenario. Which I guess the three of us couldn't have killed Jessica would be a big thing to look at, and George could not kill an adult. He could kill a kid. All right, so George could not kill a kid, but and if that was a lie, that would be a weird thing to be a lie about. So I don't think it's that. Uh, the three of us couldn't have killed Jessica. I mean, there's only one culprit, right? That was confirmed, I think, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Wait, 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 no, wait, sorry. No, wait, sorry. I'm super say, wrong. Select no. culprits, parentheses, S. Ah, oh, fuck. Yep, yeah, there could be multiple. <laughs> there could uh, be multiple. Wasn't there a thing about, wait, wasn't there a thing about there being one culprit that killed through the six Twilights? What? I thought there was a thing that said, like, for the first six Twilights, it was only one culprit. What? Was I wrong about that? No. Alright. Alright. What what are lies also here? Get a list of the red oh, truths that were said during this. Uh, let's see, we have the rules. I um, can uh, get those or if you can but Easy can provide us with the red with the red truths. They're, those will uh, be, those be available in your notes. Alright, for the red Uh so can I get George's? Sure. And I want to see Battler after him. Okay. Oh, fuck. Okay. Know this first no too. one hired in Diamond Wall. Like, I was forced to acknowledge that she was dead. And guest houses are still completely locked up. Uh, instant death. No one could kill Dr. Nanjo inside the guest house. She probably died instantly. As if Maria Chan could kill. Maria Chan can't kill anyone. Alright. Is that. Could that. Could any of these be potential lies? I guess they all This is a puzzle. Like, the fact something doesn't make sense for them to lie about doesn't necessarily I got ten mean. minutes, I gotta ask whatever I can. I mean... Alright, I... Uh, you, you said you wanted to see Battler? Yeah, uh, yep. Yeah. Nothing suspicious was found inside the dining hall. After Nanja checked their pulse, then he announced the two of them had died instantly. I also the dining hall in the same way. Anyone could have killed her beside George Anakin. None of us had now. Also, if it makes you feel any better, I'm a dumbass and y'all had like 10 hours. So now you have 10 minutes. <laughs> Extra time. Look at you. No master keys exist anymore except the two keys on the two people who lie dead here. This is where the Dr. Nandra didn't leave the guest house. George Anakin, Maria, and I couldn't have killed Jessica. Alright. So they're all saying that they cannot have killed anyone. So if that's all three of them... And then I, if all three of them are saying they couldn't have killed, I, I, I think that is something we should go off of, unless like two people killed. Oh god, trying to form logic around this is hard. On, on the spot. I mean, it has to be a servant, mm. doesn't it? Someone. Someone else with the doors get bobbed. Also, they cannot lie for the other person, so they have to. Wait, they can't lie for the other person? Yeah. Yes, but the culprits right, right. can't die. Well, what, wait, so these red deaths are confirmed red, um, right? Like, we don't have to think about them not being dead. Um, what if these, someone played dead? The uh, red ones in the check by person thing are not hmm. confirmed. They're just people who have no purple to say. Wait, the red the red people are just, they don't have any purple? They never yeah, spoke because they, they died. died. These guys so are just dead. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Wait, but if Rudolph and Kyrie were dead in the first game, why do they not have the red? Why are they not, like, highlighted in red? They are. They are. They are right they are there. Right there. Rudolph, Kyrie, right, Ava, uh, Hideo, Shiva, uh, I'm sorry. Alright, so is- so who can we narrow down as not being yet? Is there anybody? Uh, the six dead people. I mean- I mean, not being yet, not being the culprit. I'm not Andrew. sure if we can 100% discount the dead people, if it's possible people could have played dead. Well, I mean, some of these Peter's are... Not. Yeah, they're saying that. Uh, so, wait, can we go to Nanjo? Yeah, sure, we can go to Nanjo. We can and it can't be Natsuki. We can go ahead and eliminate them right off the bat. Wait, why can we eliminate them? Take wait, a look at the limits. Con, you gotta just explain it, we're on the clock here. Huh? Well, for right. one, they're both killed in the second Twilight, right? I guess. 
Plus, the culprits still have to remain alive. It's so the culprits can't die in the pools, right? Yeah. Let's if go. you go ahead and eliminate it at that point. The masterpiece getting destroyed. Should we just go to Nanjo while you figure your thoughts? Yeah, come we back. We don't have time for tangents. Yeah, come back to me. All right, doctor or not, no one is examining the body. We'll reach the long conclusion. Wait, doctor or not, no one is examining a body. We'll reach the long conclusion. Mm -hmm. uh, literally, literally, just anybody examining a literally just anybody examining a body will will not will, will will know exactly what's up with the body. Okay, so well, okay, so somebody. I mean, could they internally reach our correct conclusion? Like, I guess it means proclaim a conclusion, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so everyone co proclaimed dead is dead unless somebody lied. Mm -hmm. Which I which I guess that would count as a conclusion. Mm -hmm. Okay. When they say Karen is treated as having been killed, does that mean by the pieces or by the game? And that mutually does First Twilight. All of the kids went ahead and verified the death of their parents, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Did they? Sure. Here, let's go by. Let's go to yeah, purple trees by chapter. Yeah, let's see, everyone gathered in the dining hall. Check the corpses. The deaths of each parent was confirmed by their own child. This Shannon said this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, go on, Con. Con? All right. She's we... probably working on it. Gears turning in my head. Should we go? Should we continue on while she's while they're turning? If you're percolating, then somebody else can can make their move if you want to. Uh, this is a major question. When the red truth says Cannon is treated as being dead, does that mean the people on the game board are treating Cannon like he's dead and his masterpiece destroyed? Or does that mean we, the people watching the game, should also assume that and treat it that way? That refers to you as the people playing the video game. Yes. Okay. Uh. uh. Okay, each, Khan wrote down each case confirmed death, confirmed death, death of parents. If they were dead in the first place, no chances. Please let me see them. Someone was lying about their parents already being dead. Okay, somebody was lying about their parents being dead. Alright, so it, so you believe it's one of the kids? Yes, it's the only thing that makes possible sense. Okay, so, but they all said Corpses that... Corpses only footprints. Right, also, so, if it's one so of the wait, kids, wait, wait, wait. that makes sorry. it a... Sorry, Shelly, but I want to say this up. Now all the kids said that they were that they that they are not the killers. So wouldn't that have to make multiple kids the killer if they are lying? Well, then again, that would work as collusion, wouldn't it? <laughs> no, that is no, not entirely accurate. Is lying. Wait, who's lying? Lying? Tanya, what do you say? Yeah, also, did that work? Added into that. Their own kids. So. Sorry, Khan, Again, I didn't hear you uh, over Shell. Jen said the death of each parent was confirmed by their own kid, but if at least two of those people had happened to be still alive, and combine this with the other mysteries that have actually been shown so far, the two couple, the 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 Bonnie Bonnie Clyde stuff, Bonnie Bonnie Clyde shit. Fuck. Okay, so Kiri and Rudolph, you're talking about them, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what about them? Sorry, sorry, I'm I'm trying to figure out what's being said. Uh, go back over Battler's statements. Okay. So, yeah, I think what, what Khan's saying is that Battler lied about his parents being dead. Is there anything here, Khan? Okay, scroll wait. Down a bit more. Scroll down, yeah, scroll down more at the bottom. That's as far as it goes. Oh. Okay, none of us have not. Okay, wait, was he the only one that said that the three of them, wait, George Anarchy and Maria and I couldn't have killed Jessica? Okay, so that could be a lot. So that's probably. But keep in a mind lot. that Maria also said that the yeah, three of us could not have killed Jessica. So one of them has to be lying. Well, no. 
I, I don't know, because that, like, they're... Okay, so three of us could not have killed Jessica. That means, like, she is vouching for the others, that they did not kill Jessica. And Battler is also saying that they could not have killed anyone. So, it, unless, like, they are... Unless it has to be multiple kids lying, or none of them are the killers. Like, a part of me wants to give a thought to Maria being the killer, but I, I don't think that works. Didn't, like, both uh, uh, George and Maria, like, double-check each other? I don't think that's possible for either of them. Yeah, that would count as collusion, I believe. Well, wouldn't that mean that one of them is the culprit? No. 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 If one of them was lying, then that means that they were lying about the other person, but then we were telling the truth about them. So that means they couldn't have done it. Yeah, they're canceling each other out. Exactly. It's like a double negative. So yeah, that yeah. means that if uh, Maria and uh, George couldn't have done it, that leaves Jessica and Battler as one of the two liars. There. Can I see Jessica's statements? Sure. And the windows and the windows and, door and doors were locked, making it a locked room. We made sure that no one would arrive, would be able to enter or leave until the police arrived. We all went there outside is. to look for them. There is one minute left. At least regarding Shannon's death, it was impossible for George Nissan to be the murderer. Godasan and Kumasawa-san are both dead. The four cousins and Dr. Nanjo couldn't have killed Godasan and Kumasawa-san. He's dead. He's been killed. Maria, Fowler, George Nissan, and I couldn't have killed Dr. Nanjo. Okay, okay wait. wait. She says he's dead. He's been killed. That... No, wait, that's four of them. She that's... said oh. all. Jessica's wait. telling the truth. Wait, yeah, mm -hmm. but, but they So that leaves Battler. So wait, that's the one. Point. Wait, no, because they, because Maria canceled the, him out. Yeah, that was George. No, she canceled uh, George out, and I, Jessica I thought... has to be telling the truth. So that means Battler is one at of the, the very end. Go back to Maria. Okay, at the very so I'd end. like to solve the puzzle. Wait, Hold wait, on. Who out? Okay, uh, George can. Okay, uh, the three of us couldn't have killed Jessica. Yeah, the three of them. So she's canceling out Battler. I would like to, if you have a solution, then I would like you to explain it from start to finish when you do actually say it. Yes. And actually, your 10 minutes are up, so what is, what are we doing, guys? I, I, got, I got nothing. I, I, I don't have a start to finish, I just have a process of okay. elimination. Well, I have no, the answer. There is no okay. process. Okay. That, that, is, that is your start to okay. finish. What is the process of elimination? How'd you get there? Yeah. Okay, so, uh, one of the kids uh, has to be lying because of what Khan said. Uh, Maria and George cancel each other out. What and then that? Khan got the idea that Jessica couldn't have been lying about it. And also, she said he's dead. I don't think that could possibly be a lie. So, I mean, she can't be the culprit, which means it has to be Battler. And then, um, like, uh, Khan was talking about how they, people could have faked their death. So, I think. It's possible that Battler was in on it with Rudolph and Kyrie. Shelly, Maria said that the three of them couldn't be the killer. No, it was yes. only uh, George and Maria that couldn't be the killer. Guys, did, what did she say again? Sorry, I, I'm pretty sure that she, like it said the three of them could not be the killer. She was referring to herself, George and Battler. Yeah. In regards to Jessica. And so, yeah. Okay, but are these statements 100% true, or does she believe them? Yes, they them? are red. They are as Purple true as the red, red, if not lie. Well, it is true Purple doesn't mean red, red yeah. Lie. If she <laughs> believes guys, it, she can guys, say it. Guys, no, 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 no. Purple <laughs> is equal to red. Only the culprit can lie with it. Basically, red tells me lie. This, this is a logic puzzle. There is no element of character. Or, what, or, or believing they are correct. I'm gonna be honest, having to do this in 10 minutes kind of sucks. I know, it's an incredibly non-ideal. Uh, why was there even a time limit? Because, because we can't do this all night, we have to keep this going. They have a point, but wow, well, I hate being on the spot like this. That is like, that's, yeah, it's, it's just, it's not ideal, but it's like... Ideally, we would, ideally this would have been at the end of the last stream, but we didn't have the time for it. Right. Uh, it sounds like we got nothing. I mean, I had my answer. You just yeah. don't believe it. 
Okay. Right. So yeah. Okay, so. If I could. Mm -hmm. I'll go ahead. Mine's actually just going off of a bunch of other context clues from the other stuff, and just combining the myriad theory from other stuff that we've seen prior in the entire story. I just honestly think that it's Battler who lied originally about Cutie and Rudolph, because, as Shannon said, she was telling the truth, but we don't know if Battler was lying for certain. Okay. But I think Battler's concern in the last part, at least, was a lie. So yeah. So I think so it's Battler, and he was working with Cutie and Rudolph. So that'll be a great. Wait, wait, wait. So yeah. let me let me get the the idea of this. So he's the but so that means that he has to be the killer, right? You're saying that he has to be the killer, right? One mm -hmm. of them, yes. Okay. So oh well, I guess George only they only said that they couldn't have killed Jessica. I guess he could have killed somebody else. But then who killed Jessica? Now it's possible that if Battler and Kyrie, sorry, uh, if Rudolph and Kyrie faked their deaths, they could have been going around killing people in the shadows. Exactly. So you guys think it's, wait, can we select, oh yeah, we can select multiple. So you guys think it's Rudolph, Kyrie, and Battler? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. All right, let's, let's assume it's them. I, I'm really is... happy if I get this, because I haven't gotten a lot of these. Okay. So is that the answer you're locking in with? Uh, are, are you guys go going? Sir? Uh, just question, uh, are you guys going to actually select, like, the correct We're answer? We're only going awesome? to give you the correct answer. Yeah, okay, I think yeah. it might be canon. I think canon might be involved, but I don't know. I'm gonna go with the Rudolph Curie and Battler. I wish I could look more at what Rudolph and Kyrie... Well, actually, they had nothing. They were red. They did not say anything. Alright, so are you guys done, then? Yeah. Alright, cool. Hey, we right. did it. Woo! What the fucking Genius! Yes, we were right. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, luckily, I, I before canceling out my thing, I noticed, wait, they only said Jessica. Yeah, Jessica with the red herring. Okay, one second, because I'm not sure if I can actually scream this out loud, and my head is actually kind of kicking in. Hold on a second. You, you can do, like, a like a quiet, like, sob, I guess. That could work. No, I mean, one second, I'm going to take a quick drink. Okay, I'm good now. Somebody! Is anyone there? On it's turn! Ah! Angie flew out of the guest house, sobbing. Is there anyone alive on this island? When she checked the cousin room earlier, it had been completely empty. But she remembered that she hadn't seen Battler, George, or Maria's bodies. What she didn't know was whether this meant they were safe, or whether she was about to be reunited with them as corpses. Where are they? <laughs> Where? Answer me! She dashed around through the rain. Where was she going? Nowhere in particular. The lost little sister dashed around in circles searching for her brother. Drenched with rain and all alone. Eventually, I thought I heard my brother's voice from beyond the bush. No, it wasn't just his voice. I heard George Onichan's and Maria Onichan's voices too. Out at the top of my lungs, but they didn't answer. It's okay now. They're right there. Just on the other side of the fence. I didn't even think we see them through the fence. When I ran around the fence, I found myself standing in front of a shed or something. It must be a shed to store tools for the rose garden. The three of them were standing in front of the shed. Oh, I cried out, but my 
voice didn't reach them. And even though I yelled so loudly, something felt very wrong about this. And people hear a voice, even when they pretend not to have heard it, their bodies tend to show some sign that they noticed. However, there was no sign of that in the three of them. Screaming as loud, it truly wasn't reaching their ears. The instant I understood that, my dash toward them slowed and came to a halt. But we appeared to be in the same world, we were in actually different worlds entirely. It was like seeing someone on TV. Or was it more like seeing a ghost? I could see them clearly, but as far as they were concerned, I didn't exist. After all, look! Even if I stand in front of them, their eyes can't see me. If I try and touch them, will I really be able to? Or what if my hand just went right through? <sighs> I was so scared of the thought that I could do nothing but stand there in shock, even though I was so close to them. Damn it! I don't have a clue anymore! They must have snuck in from outside the island after all! And they're rescuing the Ashurmia family! No matter how we lock ourselves in, someone always gets killed! <laughs> it's the work of a witch after all! Everyone, calm down. Let's just calm down and think. No one exists on this island except though those are the direct relations of the Ashuramiya family. That doesn't make sense! After all, we've just seen several murders that'd be impossible for any one of us! Well, that, that that's true. But is it really? Maybe we've just missed something. Missed something? Uh, for example. That's right. Maybe someone was playing dead. Since we're the only ones on this island, the culprit must be one of us. That means someone we thought was dead was actually faking. But Anaki, that's impossible! Every one of the corpses was checked by someone. There's no way any of them were faking. I don't want to think about it. But what if one of those corp but what if those corpse inspections were also faked? It could have gone like this. There were multiple times, uh, there were, like, there were multiple culprits from the start. Then one plays dead and the other lies and confirms that the first culprit died. Then the culprit who played dead keeps on committing crimes, creating the illusion that some stranger snuck onto the island. Do you still suspect someone in the Ashermia family of being the culprit? Dr. Nanjo was killed. So it's probably safe to say he, that he is an occultist. And we can consider that the examinations performed by a doctor like him to be the most reliable. So then it's fair to say the people whose death Nando checked were almost certainly dead. Who did Nando check? Genji's corpse, Krasa Natsuhi's corpse, Shannon's corpse, Goda and Kamasawa's corpses. Think back to the beginning and the bodies in the dining hall. 
Out of those six victims, Dr. Nanja only inspected Genji-san. But didn't the rest of us check the others? Yes, but Dr. Nanja didn't actually inspect them himself. What are you talking about? How the hell could our parents have survived by being killed like that? Anyway, what do you think you're saying, George Anarchy? Would it mean that one of our parents is the culprit? That's insane! They were killed right at the beginning, and so many of them! How can you accuse our parents of being killers after that? I won't let anyone, not even you, suspect and slander our parents that they've been killed like that! Just sorry. I know my mama was really dead. So does that mean George Onichan's parents or Fatler's parents were the culprits? Uh, let's stop this, Maria Chan. I must have lost that bit back there. George Onichan wouldn't kill Shannon. It's enough! None of us would kill members of our family, right? So I don't think George Meechan would lie and see his parents were dead. Not if they were really alive. There's no way George or Meechan would help out in a crime that Shannon was going to get killed. Calmly, as though answering a quiz or a riddle, Maria spoke to George. Then with a blank look on her face, she turned to Badler and spoke. and mom's corpses, right? Yeah, I saw them. We all saw them, right? Those pitiful blood stains. I think you're lying. Huh? Where the hell did that come from? Because that way, it don't make sense. Back in the dining hall, Matler's parents weren't dead. One of them killed that Nazi and Uncle Kraus, locked the door from the inside, and waited in that room. The other one took over the murders after that. Ah. To break open the closed room of the guest house, they needed to have an accomplice inside. That was Battler. That explains everything. Enough! Stop, stop it, Battler, Gun. You too, Maria Chan. Finally, all the pieces fit together in the wolves and sheep puzzle in my head. The, the culprits are Battler's family. Huh. Am I right? What are you talking about? Like burnt to me. I was like, oh, uh, correct. No, <clears throat> no, nope. oh, oh, just a second. Hold on. Oh, they're talking. All right, I, I didn't realize they were talking to each other. <clears throat> correct. The voice came from behind Angie. She spun around, surprised. There, covered in blood. Yet wearing cheery expressions were Rudolph and Kyria. Uncle Rudolph, I'm Kyria. I'm so glad you're sick. After saying that much, George realized what his words meant, and his face twisted into an expression of shock and horror. Maria wasn't surprised, however, she showed no joy in having her answer proved correct. And, so, and, so, and as for Battler, Angie. Saw it. That terrible expression. One that she would never forget as long as she lived. It was a demon smile. A hideous demon that she'd never see again. It twisted its face into a foul grin. 
And the truly horrible thing was that she saw it on her brother's face. Rudolph and Kyrie lifted up the guns they had been holding behind them. The girls pointed at their foreheads of, at the foreheads of George, who staggered backwards, and Maria, who grinned as though she was beyond caring what happened next. There was a flash of lightning and a crack of thunder. Nothing more could be heard. Then as George and Maria were snapped around by that roar, the strings holding them were snipped. The two dolls fell into puddles with a splash and stopped moving. All this occurred right before Angie's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Angie, who stood stunned beside them, was invisible to their eyes. They guffawed, overcome with laughter, and right in front of Angie, they started joking and complimenting each other on their kills so far. The three hideous faces, the faces of her family, made Angie want to cry and vomit at the same time, and she felt it as she felt as though she would suffocate. And she dashed away, covering her mouth, going to escape this disgusting laughter coming from her beloved family as soon as possible. And she slipped and fell face down into a puddle of mud. She didn't try to get up. In fact, she instead chose to cover her ears to block out the disgusting laughter that she could still hear. And as she did, in the shadows of the fences and bushes in this inky black rose garden, several dark things slipped into sight. <laughs> Angela looked around in surprise to see eerie black shapes appearing from all over the garden and slowly surrounding her. It was a crowd of people with goat heads. Their outfits were all different. Some more suits while others dressed casually. Over all of them were covered with darkness, and all of them had goat heads. Angie, bewildered, accidentally let her eyes, her hands fall from her ears. By now, she couldn't hear that disgusting laughter. However, in their place, she could hear the words spoken by the goats. Same, uh, if you please. Kyrie and Rudolph, the culprits. Well, we could do it, though. Batler is the culprit. Batler is the culprit. Batler culprit theory. Batler's family culprit theory. As the goats continue to mumble in their eerie voices, they surrounded Angie and began to draw nearer. They all pressed around, each of them naming Angie's family as the culprits. At first, everyone joined in on the Ava culprit theory. The sole survivors from Rokenjima almost got all the wealth to herself. So such a theory was only natural. Why was Ashirmi and Ava the only one who escaped the Kulidori? And why did she refuse so stubbornly to talk about what happened that day? It was decided that, that the Ava culprit theory fit all these facts. However, when Ava died of illness, and people learned that all the vast wealth she had created by unscrupulous means would go to Angie, public opinion, or rather, the forgers, created and spread a new culprit theory. This was the Rudolph family culprit theory. If it was normal for everyone to come to the family conferences, why was Angie the only one who didn't come this time? Did Rudolph's family have some reason for not bringing the young Angie with them? They did take that one, but he wasn't Kyrie's son. Then, when it was revealed, it's in some magazines, that Kyrie's family had close ties to a massive gangster organization, 
All eyes suddenly gathered on Kyria herself. The truth of how Rudolph had made a killing out of fraudulent business practices was also laid there. And almost immediately, the couple, the couple became thought of as the most suspicious people on the island. Hideyoshi and Ava's company might have been heavy-handed at times, but at least they had operated with more honor. However, the more Rudolph's company was investigated, the more dirt was dug up. Furthermore, testimony was dug up about various scandals involving party tickets from the time Rudolph and Kyrie were students, and it was very clear that they were far more suspicious than Ava's family. And so, in a flash, the Rudolph's family culprit theory expelled the other conspiracy theories, including the Ava culprit theory, and Rain as the greatest of them all. It wasn't really because it was more plausible than the Ava culprit theory. They'd just gotten bored of the old theory and wanted a new sensation. The ghost seemed to bend and undulate. The sky rapidly turned white, becoming a ceiling lit by fluorescent lamps. The goats had changed completely, becoming the shape of girls, wearing goat masks. All the girls were wearing the same clothes. It was a uniform. The uniform of St. Lucia's Academy. You hear? They woke up through Rudolph and Kyrie. I heard, I heard. Yeah, I knew there was something suspicious about them leaving their kid behind. You think there's Shamir ever say herself that she was poisoned to death? You think the obvious who was behind that? Must be nice for her. She gets her whole family's riches all to herself, right? I always knew the Rudolph's family copy theory was right. I always thought there was something wrong with Ishumiya san. <laughs> <laughs> Rudolph and Kiri are the culprits. Isn't that like copy too? Rudolph family culprit theory. Rudolph and Kiri are the killers! And they tried to get the family wealth all to themselves, but Eva killed them back and they failed. But in the end, Shuma Angie gets everything anyway, doesn't she? Rudolph and Kiri are the culprits, of course. Rudolph's family culprit theory! Rudolph and Kiri and Battler are the culprits. Rudolph and Kiri and Bella are the culprits! <laughs> and they're saying your family were the culprits to show me a song. What do you think of that? Hey, hey, what do you think? But in the end, you get all the family's wealth to yourself, don't you? Even at the end of Shimmy, I even never told you anything, right? I always knew that girl was suspicious. This also explains why Eva hated you so much! Hey, hey, say something. Tell us what you think. She really is a creepy kid, isn't she? Can't you at least tell us what you think of this theory, creep? A blade of... oh, that is actually Angie, go. A blade of air swept over me as I crouched down, holding my head. In a flash, the illusion of female students with goat heads that surrounded me shattered. I was curled up in a puddle in the raining rose garden surrounded by goats. But then, those goats were also sliced in half, and the upper half slid to the side. It was like seeing a master swordsman slicing through a stick of bamboo. This way. The voice came from that black cat. The cat with the bell that guided me here. Incredible that it can talk. But that doesn't matter now. I 
dashed after it. The goat shrank back. A hole opened up in the encirclement. The black cat dashed through it. As I hurried through it, the goats began to chase after me. Countless heavy footsteps thundered behind us. Where are we running to, Mr. Cat? The cat ignored my stupid question. Where are we running to? It's obvious. As far away as we can make it. However, there was an unbelievable number of goats. It wasn't just the group chasing us. There were probably goats hiding throughout the Rose Garden. Everywhere we went, a group of them would appear and block our path. Each time we bumped into them, we ran down a different path in this maze or rose garden. So I didn't even know which direction we were running anymore. It couldn't be. We are running around in circles inside a massive crowd of goats, are we? When we ran into the arbor once more, I learned that my fears were justified. The four paths left in the arbor were all blocked by a crowd of goats. Of course, the path we had come down was also blocked by our pursuers. There was nowhere to go and nowhere to turn, turn to. We were finally trapped. <laughs> Mr. Cat, what should we do? We're surrounded! Clear the ghost surrounded us standing on guard. It's all over for us. At that moment, I found myself floating in the air. A massive arm, long enough to crush my entire head, had grabbed my collar from behind. Before I could even think to cry out, I saw right run on my face. A pair of strange glowing red eyes, and a massive mouth with jagged teeth, he didn't smell red. The mouth open wide. And as though it was a separate creature of bizarre tongues, dug itself out. And then it spat words at me. Rudolph, Kiri, Batman. Then, one of the parents carried out the murders up until the second twilight, and his was fed in Nazi's room. Rattler killed Shannon, and then assisted in the murders in the guest house. The other parent carried out the guest house murders. This is the truth. <laughs> that gaping, smi smelly mouth, living in the clothes of her Angie's head. It's possible from a logical theory other than the Rudolph culprit theory. A blue flash sliced off the top of the mouth that was trying to eat Angie's head, sending it flying. I fell into a puddle, along with the goat that was still grasping my collar, only there was nothing left of it above its chin. Without any hesitation, the goat stretched out their thick arms, as though they'd been giving me a second chance to snatch this prey for themselves, and they rushed towards me. And all of them spoke in unison. Anything besides the Rudolph's family culprit theory would be impossible. Absolutely impossible. Possible to perform a logical act form a logical explanation other than the Rudolph family culprit theory. For example, a theory with George's family as the culprit is culprits is possible. A red flash and a blue line became blades of wind. <coughs> that is you. Yeah. 
red flash, and the blue line became blades of wind that passed over my head. Doubly slicing the arms of a goat that tried to pick me up. I think the next goat's dashing out towards me, towards the black cat that was protecting me from behind. As I sat on my butt, staring up towards the rainy night sky, the massive goats were in the air right above me, fighting the black cat. Or someone. This is the goats again. So, uh, really. But George's family called the theory is impossible. George can't kill Shannon. So he can't be a culprit, and he can't lie when checking corpses. No, it is possible. A culprit is defined as one who murders. None of us said that they have to murder a character who appears in the story. In other words, if George committed murder outside the island, sometime before his crime, he could be a culprit without killing anyone on the island, and it would be possible for him to lie. The deep red curves bit him to go. Its massive body was knocked into the air. He got seven logs of flesh and was thrown into the rose bushes. This time, the terrible force of the attack shocked the goats. They faltered, shook, stepped back. Finally, I understood. The red slice. Yeah, it had come from a weapon that could draw red slashes. No, it also drew blue slashes just a second ago. It was a massive sight that could speak both types of truth, red and blue at will. I looked up at the sky, then let my head hang down backwards. There was no black cat there. It was a girl, holding a large sight. How's that? This level of reasoning is possible for Furido Erika. Um, are we going to stop there? Are we going to keep going for another 10 minutes or so? This, I think this is a cool place, but unless you guys have alternate time. Yeah, no, 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 I, I think the alternate point which is that we suggested orangey is actually better. Alright, let's keep going then. Just a little bit longer. Okay. <laughs> when the crowd of goats recognized the girl who called herself Erika, a stir passed through it. The feel of this person had enough of a reputation to make them tremble. Erica lifted me up, flew in the air, and loaded on top of the arbor. And she let go of me, and still wielding her scythe, making an elegant curtsy to the crowd of goats surrounding us. It's probably the first time most of you have met me. Allow me to introduce myself. Pleased to meet you, everyone. I'm Furuto Erika, the detective. If you're one of those blackheads who can only think of the Rudolph family culprit theory, stand down. If anyone thinks they can counter my argument, please feel free. Of course, I won't be holding back either. The goats all howled at once. It seemed to be a cry of shock or fear. Or possibly all. The goats surrounded the arbor, chattering, but not moving any closer. None of them had the courage to stand against this detective, the Witch of Truth called Furudo Erica. Good grief. All those thousands, and this is the best you can do. None of you has the courage to fight Furudo Erica in a battle of words. Too bad. Let's put an end to this. Then again, I. Furuto, Erica. Don't have enough spare time to counter all of you blockheads one by one. I'll let her clean up the rest. You're up! When Erica cried out, red cracks opened in the dark night sky. Like the spiderwebs shaped fissures that appeared when a glass window has been struck hard. Or was it more like a blood red spiderweb? <laughs> A laugh rang out through the spiderweb-covered world. A witch's laugh. It sounded somehow familiar to Angie. 
And there, standing on the spider web and gazing down on the goats who must have looked like trapped bugs, was the witch. You forget me, and you call him the ruler of Okenjima. You forget me, and you think Rudolph is the culprit? <laughs> and that's where we're going to wrap it up. Hey, it's that character they won't let me say the real name of. I am going to lose my mind. It's because who you said is terrible. My name is great. It's a great pun. It... <sighs> all right. Thank you all very wait, much wait, wait, for joining wait, wait, us. Question, question, question. Yes. Before, okay. Is it possible to do like a George family answer in that game section? No. Okay, I didn't think so, but like her going in red. Oh yeah, you could have totally done the George thing. All right. We are going to wrap up now for good. Uh, for the, for tonight, we will have more. For, for Erica, good. not for good. I mean for right now. Woo! We will have more of Erica and Avatris later. <laughs> good night, everyone.